Microplastics are referred to as forever chemicals because they don't degrade like organic matter does. And that's because they're made from materials such as crude oil, which is where we get our petrol from. Now we've known for many years that microplastics are polluting our seas, our rivers and our agriculture. But what about our bodies? What is the prevalence of microplastics in our bodies? Well, actually it's relatively high. CDC scientists have found BPAs, which is a type of plastic, in the urine of almost all the people that they tested and it's estimated that we are exposed to anywhere between tens of thousands to millions of microplastics every single year. Now you may be thinking that's okay because these microplastics will just pass straight through me. Well not exactly because surgeons have tested various different tissues within their patients and found levels of microplastics lodged in a variety of different tissues that they tested. And they found around nine different types in this one scenario. So we have levels of microplastics in our bodies. The question of course is how much is this affecting our health? Should we be worried? And most importantly, what can we do to avoid them? This is exactly what I'm going to uncover in this video. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephen for those of you that don't know me and in this video we're going to be unpacking the topic of microplastics which is something that is can be quite hard to avoid in our modern society. It is pretty much everywhere. However, we really need to know the implications that it has on our health so we can motivate us to try and reduce it as much as possible. Just before I go through them though, it is important to note that the aim of this video is not to scare you, but just to help you to be aware of the impacts that these plastics have to try and motivate you to try and reduce them now before they may start causing issues in your life later on. So the first thing is digestion. And I think one of the biggest ways we're gonna be consuming microplastics is gonna be through our digestion. So ingesting it orally. And this is mainly obviously gonna come from food and drink. And it's mainly gonna be because the food or drink has been heated cooked in plastic or whether it's been stored in plastic or just packaged in plastic or the fact that they found microplastics in the soil where they grow some of our food so it can be quite hard to avoid now it causes problems because it can actually irritate our digestive tract physically causing inflammation but it's also been shown to to cause a dysfunction to the bacteria in our gut. If you've seen my previous video on the gut bacteria, this is very, very important for the proper function of our digestive system and therefore almost sets the foundation of our health. Disruptions can cause issues with our gut lining as well, which is a very critical barrier. It's basically the barrier that decides what gets accepted into our body and goes into our bloodstream and what shouldn't go into our body and should get excreted. What microplastics can do is disrupt this barrier and almost like opening up some of the holes in a sieve to make them larger, which then means that substances that shouldn't be getting through can start to get through and this can lead to things like inflammation in the body. It has also been shown to cause issues with our respiratory system and amazingly microplastics have been measured even in our air, particularly in indoor air and particularly if it's not circulating very well or it's not particularly fresh. This is in the same way that it has an effect on our digestive system. It's going to cause a physical irritation and therefore inflammation to our respiratory tissues and causing oxidative stress. And this is going to, of course, then lead to various different respiratory problems like breathing difficulties. It also has an impact on our endocrine system. And this is most likely because it's ingested through our digestive system and goes into our blood. If it goes into our blood, it has the possibility of interfering with some of the hormones. One paper here concluded that microplastics interfere with the production, release, transport, metabolism, and the elimination of hormones, which can cause endocrine disruption. This is hormone disruption and leads to various endocrine disorders, such as metabolic disorders, developmental disorders, and even reproductive disorders. So causing infertility, miscarriage, and congenital malformations. It's also been associated with a reduction of sperm count and microplastic can mimic hormones like estrogen and has an effect 
in decreasing testosterone levels. This is why microplastics have been linked with infertility. Number four is that it can disrupt weight management or disrupt your metabolism. So if you're struggling to lose weight, this may just be one of the reasons why you're finding it difficult because of the microplastic consumption. One mechanism may be because if the microplastics are disrupting your gut bacteria, we know that a disruption in your gut bacteria can have an effect on your weight. Studies showed how when they swapped the gut bacteria from an obese mouse with a skinny mouse, the skinny mouse became fat and the obese mouse became skinny. So the bacteria that we have in our gut has a big role to play with our weight management. Now I'm going to go through some ways in which we can reduce microplastics day to day and obviously I'm not going to be covering everything so if you can add anything to this feel free to put them into the comments and then we can all learn from each other. So the first thing is to try and avoid anything plastic when it comes to food or drink. Now the first thing I'm going to suggest is to throw away your plastic kettle and a friend of mine actually made this clear to me about a year ago and actually it should be fairly obvious that if you're going to be boiling hot water in a plastic kettle over and over again several times a day for many many years it's understandable that some of that plastic is probably going to start to leach into that water and actually even says on the kettle companies on some of the small print it actually says that you should throw away the kettle after a certain amount of time because of this problem so you want to try and avoid plastic kettles and get a metal or ceramic kettle ceramic kettles are a bit harder to find but you should certainly be able to find a metal kettle. The next thing is to store your food in glass and not plastic. So if you're going to make food and put it in the fridge, put it in a glass container, not a plastic one. If you're going to take food for lunch, where possible, put it in a glass container, but also try and get a glass water bottle and not a plastic water bottle. And you certainly don't want to heat your food in plastic in the microwave and that also includes plastic microwave covers. This is probably one of the worst things you can do because even when you take the plastic out of that microwave, you can feel how hot that is and often it's a little bit soft or it's sometimes even malformed. If it's getting soft and hot, there's an extremely good chance you're getting microplastic into the food that you're heating there. So always put it into ceramic or glass container if you're gonna put it into the microwave and just generally try to keep food out of plastic containers. You also don't want to use plastic chopping boards because you're cutting into that plastic and you often see that plastic chopping boards will have little pieces starting to peel off and break off. There's a good chance that that is just going to go into the food that you're cutting and so try to stick to chopping boards that are more natural materials like wood. You also want to avoid plastic clothes, so polyester clothes, and try to stick more towards natural materials like cotton, silk, and wool. And one of the big reasons is because every time you wash them, so you put them through heat, you're going to be releasing a level of microplastics. And the last thing is to have good airflow in your house to try and minimize the buildup of any microplastics in the air. Now, don't be fooled if a product is bragging about being BPA free. Often what they do is to swap it with another type of plastic that we may just not know as much about the health implications of, but chances are it's probably not actually that much better. My advice would be try to just generally stay away from plastic when it comes to food and drink in particular as much as possible. Now I've talked about earlier about the gut microbiome. If you want to learn more about this and how you can specifically build your gut microbiome, your the bacteria in your gut and why this is really really important, I highly suggest you check out the video I did previously that will pop up in just a sec just here but just before that does if you head into the description into this video you can get 10% of Vivo Barefoot shoes minimalist shoes that I wear every single day 10% of Athenae's a superfood specifically formulated for men 10 pound off a bag of organic coffee that's optimized for your health and 15% of a natural deodorant called Fatty that doesn't have any of the harmful chemicals. I'll see you either on this video or my next. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.